just, like, kick me out. I'm so sorry, Maggie. <laughs> so I will um, just kind of wait here. Um, and hopefully she comes back so that we can hear her rosary story. I hope that it didn't lose the rosary. Like, I hope that part at least is saved. Um, cause it just kicked me out. Just totally kicked me out. Um, so I hope Maggie sees this so that we can talk to her. <gasps> Yay. Okay, good. All I kept thinking was like, so early <laughs> and now we're... so okay thank you thank you god <laughs> hey, okay sorry about that maggie i don't it just <laughs> out and there was just a screenshot it said live video ended i don't this know it's just so great because last night of course i was looking through all your past videos being like oh my gosh i didn't know we had to have some profound rosary story at the oh. end my husband's like, well, you're just going to have to go with it. And then it dropped. And I was like, this is of God. Like, I don't have to tell my rosary story. I'm totally kidding. That's kind of funny, right? Yeah, because it's like, it just literally kept it dropped. Like, I didn't tell you. <clears throat> yes. And so although I don't have, like, an incredible rosary story, <laughs> I was thinking about, I was thinking about Mary and the image that always comes to my mind that I love, and that's with baby Jesus snuggled on her chest. Mm, yeah. And I just, I mean, especially as a mom, it's so relatable because in that moment of parenthood, it's like you can infuse every bit of love you have into them, right? Mm -hmm. It's like no other, you're ahead of me in motherhood as far as ages. And like, I feel like no other phase of motherhood can you infuse every ounce of love you have. I just so, and he goes there to rest. And I just so often think about and as a mom, am I doing enough for praying? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Am I being a holy enough example for my children? And I love that reminder because it reminds me that I can go to Mary just like our earthly moms simply to rest and just be encouraged by her motherly wisdom and just like snuggle in for a minute, you know, and get that pat on the back. Like, it's okay. You're not alone. I'm here. Yes. And I just love that simple bit of, I don't know, that picture in my head that I have of her as a mother to rest in. And another little bit of encouragement I have is I'll never forget a couple of years ago tuning into your time lapse videos of your family doing the rosary. Oh, yeah. And just, I love, like, all the kids are moving and darting all over creation throughout the whole prayer. And my first thought was, God has to be just delighted in this, just delighted in watching this. Right. <laughs> and sometimes I take that image and I think about my mind as a mom trying to pray and how my thoughts are just darting all over creation. And then little people are darting all in around me. And my prayer always feels incomplete. But I think he has to be delighted in it and it has to be complete to him. You know, I just think even as incomplete as we feel, as moms, I'm sure as a father, he sees it as complete. And so I just hope that any tired or busy mom out there who is feeling inadequate, which I feel like we all battle at the end of every day, yes. hope that they know that they are enough as a mom, but even more beloved as a daughter in him and that they can just take a minute to rest and like rest on the chest of the Holy Family and be rejuvenated. Yes. So I, do you have five or? Yes, five. So I'm curious how you, I love how you said how you feel like, right, as we even pray, it can feel like as a mom, our thoughts are just darting one way and darting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you find your, kind of like your desert mm -hmm. with your family and even also being as like a homeschool, as you homeschool too, as a mother? Yeah. How do you kind of stay open to, you know, praying to God or listening? Yeah. yeah. So mine, I feel like happens throughout the day. So I still try and do a rosary every day. And half the time it's a full rosary, like all at once. And then the other half the time, it's a decade in the shower, a decade on the walk, a decade. And at times, if I feel like I don't have the time, which I feel like has really helped is I'll pop it on audio and walk around the house. And 
I say, you can follow mom while I do all my chores, but I can't talk back because I'm praying and you're welcome to pray with me. And sometimes I have all my little ducks in a row following me around the house, just listening. And sometimes I don't. And so <laughs> I think what they are starting to pick up and realize is this time is important to mom. And not only is it important, but it makes her happy and peaceful and a rested mom. And they like that association. And so I feel like we have tried the rosary in the evenings with littles. And in this phase of life, what I have found that I'm able to do during homeschool is that it goes so much better in the middle of the day for us when, you know, we're not all so tired. <laughs> Whereas like um, we send our kids to school, it's yeah. kind of the moment they get off the bus that four to five o'clock, you're like, I don't even know what's going on. Cause <laughs> yes. But I need to know that I need to say that to, to my kids. Cause I often put on the oh. audio rosary, but they like keep, they keep wanting to talk. <laughs> it's yeah. like, no, I'm trying to pray. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll say like, you can talk, but I just can't say anything back because I'm talking to God right now. And I need that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I also love to hear about like kind of the start of your blog. And then also, I think I read that you tried homeschooling and you didn't think that you maybe would necessarily like it, mm -hmm. but just how that transition. Yeah. Is, and, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I actually went to school to be an elementary school teacher. And so I never in a million years thought I would homeschool. I thought I would send my kids and kind of be a stay at home mom. And then when they all went to school, I'd go to school to teach. And then uh, my oldest was a year away from starting kindergarten. And I just had some homeschool families pop into my life and I was really intrigued by them. And then I was encouraged to truly discern um, what we were going to do with our kids' education. And I know it sounds so silly, but I feel like it's so easy to just do what everyone else is doing, right? And instead of actually sit and discern, like, well, this is what we're gonna do and this is, and because I was a stay at home mom, I thought, my gosh, I didn't realize I had to discern. I thought I could just, you know, like be a great lunch packer and send them on their way. <laughs> and, then, and so then we prayed about it for a year and it was very clear that we were being called to homeschool, but I was still afraid. And so I still didn't want to. So I just kind of let that prayer sit up in the sky. And then I knew I had to give it a try and I struggle with perfectionism and I didn't want to fail. And so I, with my oldest, I said, okay, I'm going to do a trial year, the year before kindergarten. So that if I fail, he can still go to kindergarten and didn't miss all of his, you know, primary colors. Like <laughs> we've got this. And so I think what I did in my mind was get truly wrapped up in the logistics. So I prepared for the schedule, I prepared for the curriculum, I prepared for the socialization, I prepared and what um, I didn't prepare for was the unbelievable amount of grace that he gave our family and our hearts and our time together. And I just get emotional because I, I don't know how I got so caught up in like the surface level of fear that I almost missed out on getting to do life with them, which feels like the greatest honor. Yeah. I love how, how, what you just said there about the surface level of fear, and then even how the third mystery, um, the fruit is, you know, poverty of spirit, yeah. which it's really to not hold your esteem to the world or right. Position yourself on, achieving in that world where we're really supposed to stay focused on, on heaven and God. And I'm curious, like how, how did you, I guess, push through the surface level fear? <laughs> Out of yeah, not well. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I constantly had to justify like, okay, we're doing this because this, we're doing this because this, and the first year was so restless. And I think I was, grasping for validation and reasons and peace and rest, which we all want. And I feel like we're grasping for from now until eternity, right? And it's just not really found in this world. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> instead of grasping for everything to feel fine and smooth and perfect, I think the real gift came from 
we have a lot of hard days and a lot of days of suffering. Right. And the fact that I get to go through this suffering with you and the fact that you get to see mom 24 seven, not getting to hide from any of my weaknesses from you, you know, is very sanctifying. <laughs> but yeah. just it changed from, okay, we found our grounding, we found our peace, we found our, it changed from that to, wow, we get to go through this life of Christian suffering together. And this is what this life is. The life, our life is the cross and there are days of grace. And those days are a blessing because they're hard to come by. But to get to be in it together and to do life together has been wonderful. That's so beautiful. Now, um, yes, um, Tulua had asked, what are the ages of your children? Oh, one, three, five, seven, nine. Oh, oh, wow. Yes. So you're in like the thick of the beauty. Oh, that's such a great way to put it. <laughs> you know, I it's, like, you that. <laughs> well, I, you know, um, I was, people are always like eight. Look, that's a lot. Like how you really do that. But, you know, when I look back, it, it was more the time when we had the probably the three, right? It's because when, when they're little, they really, I mean, they're, they're so beautiful. <laughs> But the amount of endurance that a human being or mom needs of patience is, yes. Yes. it is so hard. And you really have to kind of just savor and absorb the chaos and the, the hard and then the beautiful sanctifying moment, we'll call it. Yes. And I love getting to hear this from you just because I think a couple of people from my community watching would be so encouraged to hear from a mom of eight that us moms aren't lying that it gets easier after three. Like as soon as you got extra hands and helpers on deck, now I feel like it's unfair. Like I shouldn't keep you guys around all day because you do all my chores for me. <laughs> well, I think that's, you know, we have to have to all of a sudden, we realize you can make this transition that like the oldest yeah. ones can start helping, watching, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's, it, you start to really witness kind of the strength of a family when you have so many yeah, really kind of looking to everybody to help. But for a long time, I, you know, I used to have a motto about like outsource what you can, but I don't know. Now I think it's, it's really more about training and habits, right? Good habits. And, um, Absolutely. I, like the oldest end up doing most of the teaching for you. Right. And a more, refined way than you could I feel like, like don't look at mom look to the oldest they're doing it better than I am right now I just feel well, like instead of having to teach virtues the more there are they kind of just have virtue ingrained in their lives and forced upon them through patience and tolerance and you know it's also that and it's also okay mom's in a bad mood so. <laughs> yes 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 mom's tired or mom needs yeah. help or you yeah. know um, the older ones are good at recognizing that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now I have one question for you. Sure. Go. How old is your oldest? So she's thirteen. She'll she'll be fourteen in October, actually. Okay. So for all those preteen and teen moms out there, how do you keep her praying and keep her? Well. Uh, I would say she's pivoted more away from wanting to be a part of it. <laughs> and so, you know, I think it's more because I or like, we don't want to necessarily push. And so we just try to be the example. Yeah. And if, I think, I think what's really most important is just communication and just keeping those communication lines open. Yeah. And keep going. Um, because as you, I mean, she's wonderful, but you know, you, I, I fear a little bit about the teen years, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle that emotionally. And that's why I'm grateful for my spouse because <laughs> they're very, he's very even. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Chris for just a little, but, um, yeah, I think, I think prayer is so essential. I just find when I'm, we've been with all eight all week long and all weekend long. It, I just find it, it's so hard to find the desert or the quiet. And like when you said the darting thoughts, mm -hmm. it's like, I even go to, to bed at night now and I'm just like sitting there in the quiet and I don't even want to sleep because 
it's like I, I just miss. Oh my gosh. You know? Yeah. Yes. And I think I was talking to a mom friend about this the other day that as wonderful as husbands are and as one, everything they do for us, no one will ever fully understand the mental load of a mom, right? Because as we're changing the laundry, we're like, now we got to order the next size of diapers and then the dentist appointment and then the, but did you check if, you know, <laughs> and <clears throat> the mental load is so real that I think when you do find a desert and oasis of silence too, sometimes it's difficult for me to pray in that moment because I'm like the silence alone is, you know, divine. <laughs> I, um, I, I hadn't, the mental load is like so real for my brain. Cause I feel like I have a monkey brain. And so my kids will even be talking to me and I'm like, no, I have to remember. I have to write this down. I have to write this down because and yeah. then you forget. And yes. there is a lot and just a lot of moving parts all the time. Oh yeah. And you have to kind of be open to that case. So like, how is your family rosary? Well, it usually now happens in the middle of a day. So okay. summer was kind of chaotic, but now we're settling more into the school year routine. And mm -hmm. so if we're just all usually sitting on the living room floor, and my husband's home some days from work, so some days he can be there, some days not, but um, we sit on the living room floor, and it looks very similar to what yours used to look like when you would post, is lots of movement. Yeah, my nine-year-old still, my seven-year-old's upside down. My four-year-old's, you know, got the church giggles. Happens to every time. <laughs> and then, which my three-year-old feeds off of. And then the one-year-old is, you know, doing his thing. So it's chaotic, but I think it's truly what God <laughs> delights in. Yeah. It's, it is truly a, it's just something you have to do. And it's, I, they see us, I feel like. They see us when we're praying and how we're praying. Mm -hmm. I find with the little kids, too, the intentions are really helpful. Like when you just ask them what are they or who do they want to pray for. And that's when you really see the beauty in their hearts because. Yes. yes. Well, and it was just not that long ago that my three-year-old's intention was like, God, please help me reach my toy that's stuck under the couch. You know, and it's so simple and so straightforward. And I think, why do I even try to make my prayers sound better than they need to? And it's like, how much in life am I reaching for? And all I need to say is, God, just please help me reach it if it's your will, instead of yeah. all the ins and outs. You know, it, it reminds you of the simplicity and truly becoming childlike. Yeah, exactly. They really are our greatest. Sorry, Sam's putting stuff in her. They really are our, our greatest teachers. Mm -hmm. In, in, in how to be present and, and savor the present and delight in the present, right, with God? Oh, yeah. She's putting stuff in her mouth. <laughs> uh, but you are at such a beautiful stage. They're all beautiful, yeah. and they're always evolving, but it's, it's so sweet and precious and pure and <sighs> so beautiful where you are. Well, thanks for continuously being a witness to all of us because. Oh, no, I, I need it. I probably need it more than yours. <laughs> no, Kristen, you can say a million things at once, but the thing you make a priority for every single day is um, encouraging souls to keep their eyes on eternity, which is incredible. So we are grateful. That is so sweet. It's, it's truly a, a, a gift from the Holy Spirit and all here. Cause I just think there's all, we, we start to really see just the beauty of prayer and the rosary mm -hmm. and connection. And it's been truly every day when I like reflect, like what well, was probably the best thing I've done all day. It's, it's all, you never really regret prayer, right? Never. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's the truth. <laughs> well, okay, so I don't know. I hope that the rosary, sometimes it cut me out, but sometimes they save the um, draft, the app. Just, uh, I hope it's saved. But um, but I'm glad we at least got to talk, too. I am glad, too. <laughs> we got up so early. 
Oh my gosh. Please. Oh, it's okay. Oh. Now I'm going to be real happy for my kids. You know, oh, I okay. just need a minute before they come down the stairs. I got my minute. <laughs> and you guys, are you in, in Indiana now? Is it, but you're at, We're you're in on. Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Yeah. And that's where we live anyways. So <laughs> the mountains are just like two hours away from where we live. So, yeah. So beautiful. It was so good to meet you. So nice to meet you too. You yes. have been so, you've been my celebrity crush for years. So I was like, could sleep oh. all night. <laughs> so sweet. Oh. Yes, yes, truly. All right, well, Sam, thanks for joining us. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Maggie. Bye. Pray for your family.